up today. A man with a rubbish finger swears a lot while taking a diesel injection pump off. And a man with a rubbish finger starts throwing things around, putting the diesel injection pump back on. And we've had the grandchildren for a week. week. Mm -hmm. So you want to look a bit tired and a bit dopey. Oh, you're a dear. <laughs> <laughs> now then, welcome to the video. Before we start, I'd like to say a big thank you to all you likers, watchers and subscribers, new and old. I'd also like to thank you for some of your comments. We've had one from Peter. He's planning on buying a floating tube and enjoying the waterways just like us. I hope he gets to live his dream. If you've got out to say, you've got any questions or even suggestions for what we can do, stick them in the comment box wherever YouTube's put it this week and I'll do my very best to get back to you. In today's video, we'll be removing and refitting a diesel injection pump. Uh, we'll be refurbing it before we refit it. What's a diesel injection pump, I hear you all collectively sigh? Well, it's a pump that injects diesel into the engine. Let's have a look at where we went. There we go. Trusty pointy screwdriver pencil at the ready. And in today's DIY spectacular will mostly be here in the engine room. And we must all remember to follow the barely floating motto measure twice, cut once and then hammer it into fit. Let's crack on. Taking off a diesel injection pump in an engine room isn't as easy as it sounds. First, we had to remove all the things we normally keep in the engine room. From tools, fluids, buckets, wet weather gear and mooring equipment. It all had to go. We piled it up in the rest of the boat in everybody's way. Next was the deck boards. This left us with a relatively roomy area to work in. Now, whenever you undertake a task like this, you need to have everything close to hand. Not having the correct size spanner can cause stress, time delays and the inevitable swearing. So, with a hodgepodge of tools and a very short temper, we set about removing the pump. On the 1.5 BMC engine, the pump is located on the side of the engine towards the rear. It sticks out 90 degrees from the engine block. On the 1.8, it's in parallel with the engine and more towards the front of the engine as well. It's responsible for delivering the freshly filtered diesel to the injectors. The suspected issue 
is that the pump could be leaking diesel into the engine sump. This is usually caused by the seals and workings of the pump drying out or even wearing out. And the only way to remedy the problem is a total rebuild. Let's watch the fluffy haired buffoon as he makes a pig's ear of this. The first thing we did was isolate the power from the batteries. That's just a big switch on the boat's fuse console. I think it was taken from the set of a James Bond movie from the 60s. Next, the throttle cable and stop cable. I managed to drop a small fitting into the bilge and spent 10 minutes looking for it. After a bit of faffing, I managed to remove the front plate, which gave me access to the injector pipes. just realised them's me old glasses. The ones I ran over. Ah, the memories. Oh, you. Pig. The injector pipes are easy to get off when you compare it to the nuts holding the pump to the engine block. There are three nuts and only one is easy to get at. After 11 minutes I began to swear a lot. So filming ended. Uh, it should be. Why? Oh. No, it's um, it's probably run out of uh, charge. In the end, I had to remove both the starter motor and the oil filter housing and after another two hot, cramped and finger scraping hours I finally managed to free the damn thing. And this is where it lived. Bit of a clean up and that'll be fine. And there we have it. The removed pump. All grimy and mucky. The very next day, I shot off to Diesel Bob's just outside Longridge to get the thing rebuilt. I then informed the CRT about my inability to move. Well, actually I forgot. Within the week, an email arrived advising me I should move every 14 days. We're CCers and it's the rules. I had to contact the CRT chap and let him know the progress, etc. After a week, we had no word from Diesel Bob, so I rang him. He was having trouble getting parts. This has become more common in most supply chains at the moment. Another week went by, still no pump. On week three, success! The pump was ready. 
it was time to refit. If you squint real close, you can see the timing mark. I aligned that on the engine block and the engine's already timed. Look how shiny that is. Due to my use of the common Anglo-Saxon dialect, I was unable to use the footage that we'd done in my refitting that and it had nothing to do with the fact that the camera was pointing at a wall. Anyway, it's basically the opposite of taking it off. Again, it took me two hours to put it back in cramped hot conditions, but I managed it. With everything back in, it was time to hold our breath, cross all our bits and give her a turn over. Bleeding these BMC engines can be tricky, but I've done it loads of times. Let's see if she fires. beginning to that man's talents. Well, there we are. Laura's back on the move with a very shiny injection pump. Next thing is a test drive. How far will we go? Will we make it? If we do make it, will my head fit in the boat? Here's a sneaky peek. Oh, that sounds rough. If you enjoyed this video, Give us a like, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you click that little bell icon, YouTube will mind you next time we release one. Well, that's everything on my list. 
I reckon we'll call it a draw for this one. Till next time.